हेलो चैंपियंस वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन द सी एस आर नेट जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव इन दिस वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ यू कैन सॉल्व ऑल दो क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू द नोमेरिकल एनालिसिस विच वॉज आस्क इन द पार्ट बी एंड पार्ट सी माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर हरीश कर यू कैन फॉलो एंड सब्सक्राइब माई यूट्यूब चैनल नाउ द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू द क्यूबिक क्यूबिक सप्लाई एंड इट इज फ्रॉम द पार्ट बी तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल गिव द टिप्स once you can read this tips then you can easily solve this problem within the 15 to 30 second time period what is the meaning of the cubic supply any function say s of x is said to be the cubic supply if the function s the function s dash and the function s double dash are my continuous that's the only concept which we are used to solve this problem that means the function s is continuous fine the function s dash is my continuous and the function s double dash is my continuous now the given function has the breaking point 1 and the 3 fine the function is continuous at the point x is 1 and at the point x is equal to 3 so what will happen at the point x is equal to 1 if you substitute x is 1 this number is a the second number is 0 and correspond to this case is my 1 therefore a is equal to 1 at the point x is equal to 3 if you substitute 3 minus 1 whole square which is equal to 3 minus 2 whole square that is a 1 and 3 minus 3 is 0 this implies c is equal to half now the only target is to find the value of the b now again you can see because the b is involvement only in the x is equal to 1 i can check only at point 1 s dash if you find the derivative at the point 1 it's a 2 of a 1 minus 2 plus 0 which is equal to twice of 1 minus 2 again give you the a is equal to 1 fine now s dash s double dash is continuous at 1 which implies 2 of a 2 of b second derivative is my 2 and it hence a plus b is equal to 1 if a is equal to 1 b is my 0 substitute the value in the required format you will get 2 plus 0 plus 1 the right answer is 3 is the correct option so that is a b option is the right answer of the problem always remember whenever you are talking about the supply you always use the continuity concept and get the answer Okay, look at the second question, which is related to the matrix. As I told you every time, whenever you will see the question related to the matrix, you can solve the problem either with the help of the rank or the eigen value. The same question I already uploaded in my linear algebra video. Fine, with the help of the eigen value that you can see if you are interested. But I will tell you the another shortcut tricks how you can find the largest eigen value. the largest eigen value that is less than equal to the maximum of sum of the absolute values of the each row sum of the or you can say instead of the sum you can say absolute value of the each row means nee, sum absolute value of the each row fine that means if you find the sum of the each value as absolute like if say it is a negative then you have to find 29 more minus 55 more plus absolute value of this 70 fine so now in this case is a negative so if you find the sum of the absolute value it's a 10 101 101 fine sorry it's not a maximum uh, yeah, yes it's a maximum fine it's a maximum again it's a sum 101 it is 101 it is 101 that means the sum of the each number that is the maximum of 101 101 101 101 101 that means the maximum eigen value is my 101 so these two options are cancel out now because each row because each row has the same sum so what i told you in my previous videos if each row has the same sum and that sum will be one of the eigen value that means 67 is cancel a is my right answer of the problem there is one more methods okay i can tell you one more method you can use the gorgi circles 
point. What is the Gauri circle is? He said lambda minus the first diagonal value is less than or equal to absolute value of the sum of the absolute values of the remaining quantity. 0 plus 55 plus 17. So that number be 5, 6 and 72. Because I need the absolute value. Uh, I need the largest value. So it can be written as 1, 0, 1. Similarly, for the second row, the second row, the diagonal entry is my 28. This is less than or equal to sum of the remaining entries. So it's a 72 and 73. That implies lambda is less than or equal to 1, 0, 1. Similarly, for the third, diagonal entry is my 33, which is less than or equal to 38, 68. Again, it implies lambda is less than or equal to 1, 0, 1. And for the last case, lambda minus 13 is less than or equal to sum of the absolute value. That number is my 88. Again, that implies 1, 0, 1. Fine. So once you are using the bounds, so that means this number will be minimum of the upper bound. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. What is the minimum value of this number is? 1, 0, 1. So again, you can see the upper bound is my A is the right answer. If you are using the Gauri circle, then you can take on firstly a bound and then take the minimum. On the other hand, if you are using the eigenvalue concept, then you can find the sum of the absolute values of the each quantities and then find its maximum value. So in both the cases, the right answer is A is my correct answer. Look at this another one. Alpha and beta are the real numbers such that this equation will be satisfied for all the polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2. That is a quadrature formula. Fine. Can you find the basis of the quadrature formula? 1 x x square. Fine. So let's start with the first basis. If f is equal to x, I can substitute the equation. 3, 3 over 2, 1 plus 1. That is a 3 is equal to 3 satisfied. If you take the second, f is equal to x, it will be x square over 2. That number will be 9 over 2 is equal to 3 over 2 alpha plus alpha. That is a 2 alpha plus beta. That implies 2 alpha plus beta is equal to 3. Then you can choose on this second one is a x square. Then it number is x cube over 3. x cube over 3 will be my 9. It is 3 over 2. This number is my alpha square. This number is alpha plus beta whole square. So that means I can find the value of the alpha plus beta from the equation. It is 3 minus alpha and it will be 3 minus alpha and this number is my 18 divided by so it's a 6. Fine. Now you can solve this equation L2 alpha square minus 6 alpha plus 3 is equal to 0. So can you find the value of the alpha minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac. 4 to your a, 24. That is my 12 divided by 2a. So it's a 6 plus minus 2 root 3 over 4. That means 3 plus minus root 3 over 2. It is a root 7. Fourth, third, second options all are cancelled. Only right option is a is my right answer. You can see alpha is my plus minus root 3. 3 plus minus root 3. I can substitute the value in this equation you can get the value is my root 3. I hope you can like and comment on this video as well. Consider the initial value problem and why is the Euler method. The same question I already explained in my ordinary differential equations lecture. But what is the Euler method? Yn plus 1, yn plus h, f of x and yn. What is the f? You can compare the given differential equation or initial value problem. So therefore you can get f is my, can you compare the value of the f? It is my minus y. I can substitute the values. What is the h? I can choose any of the h. Let's say half. Then this number is my half and this number is y of n. So after the calculation, you will get half of the y n. Now, if you look about the options, your target is to find the value of the y n. Fine. So can you find the value of the y n from this equation? It's very easy. You can use the recurrence. 
y of 0. Now you can see that it is n plus 1. This number is n. The difference is my 1, n plus 1 and n. Difference is 1. In this case, what is the difference is n. Fine. And what is the value of the y0? This number is my y of 0. So I can substitute y of 0 is my 1. So therefore, your equations become yn is 1 over 2 raised to power n. Is it fine? Now look at the first option, the sequence convergent or not. Your target is to find the limit. What is the limit as n approaches infinity? 0, which is my unique and finite. So what will happen if the limit is my unique and finite? That means this number is my convergent. But the first option say does not convergent. First option cancel. Second option clearly say the limit is my 0. Fine. Clearly say from this case y of n is always lies between 0 and 1. Fine. The third option is also correct. Look at the fourth option. Y n. So fourth option implies this is my y n. But what is the y? Because we are calculating the y n by the Euler method. But what is the y? Y is the solution of the given initial value problem. How you can solve the initial value problem? I can use the auxiliary equations. That number is m plus 1 is 0. Therefore, y is equal to c e raised to power minus x. Now, y of 0 is 1. It implies c is equal to 1. Therefore, y of x will be e raised to power minus x is my solution. So I can substitute the value y of nh. Fine. I can write this number is e 1 over e nh minus 1 over. So what will happen as n approaches infinity? The first value will goes to the 0. Second value will also goes to the 0. Therefore, the difference will goes to the 0. That is the right answers are 2, 3 and 4 are my correct answer of this problem. You can see that all these part B and part C is a very, very simple questions. And I hope you can really enjoy this session too. Let me know in the comment box. Have you interested to watch some another videos? Till then you can like, you can comment on this video and you can share this video with your friends so that they can learn it with the happy learning. I hope you can enjoy this session too. Best wishes always. Thank you very much.